Canada's immigration numbers, as we know, are out of control, just as they are in the United States. Now, for of all people, Dr. Phil just went down to the border and said the number is nowhere near the few million they say it is, somewhere between two and six, right, of illegal immigrants. They said the actual number is around 11 or 12. Now, wide open border in the United States. You can see everything. News crews are going down all the time. YouTubers are going down all the time to see it for yourself. The immigration numbers are not necessarily something you see in Canada. Our illegal immigration is there, but you look at our yearly illegal immigration, it's like 10, 11, 12,000 people. That is a day in the United States. So that's not really the issue. In the U.S., you can be like, let's make the laws stricter. Let's actually follow the laws. Let less people in through the border, yada, yada, yada. But in Canada, they're following the laws and exploding the population of the country legally is what the Trudeau government is doing. Now, they took the opportunity that they had during the, the COVID lockdowns and if people not paying attention and struggling to pay their bills and feed their family, you know, getting kicked out of work if you're one of the you know, 10% of people who didn't get vaccinated in the country. Huh, bigots. They took that opportunity to inc- to jack up the legal immigration that they're doing. Now they're saying they want a million. It was 500,000. It was 600,000. Let's get it up there to a million, right? And, you know, you're not going to get an argument from Jack Meat. You're not going to get an argument from anybody in the Trudeau government. But you need to get an, an argument from somewhere. It has been... You know, the last 20 years before this huge influx of Canadians saying we need to lower immigration. That's people of every single race saying that. People who come here say, yeah, the numbers are pretty are pretty high. People who are international students say there's too many people here. We don't get any services. The amount that it's increased is just completely unsustainable, especially when you put them all into the same places over and over again. Of course, we're talking about Vancouver and we're talking about around the Toronto area and Mississauga and everything else and everything east of that. It's completely out of control. And for some reason, even though people don't necessarily want it, nobody will say anything. Now, Pierre Polyev has said that we need to, you know, Bring in the amount of people relative to the amount of homes we had. That's honestly, that's an insane thing to say. I mean, it's technically correct, but if we have 35 million homes, does that mean we need to bring in 35 million people? You see what I'm saying? That is, that is technically, you know, statistically a good thing that you have enough houses for the people you're bringing in, but it doesn't account for the cultural change. It doesn't account for the job market. It doesn't account for a lot of things. And I can't think for the life of me, other than being afraid of being called mean or racist or xenophobic. You have to say that with a certain accent, xenophobic. I can't think of another reason why the conservatives don't want to say anything about it. They seem to support it, even though most people don't. Now there are, things you can do about it. I mean, there are ways you could stem the cultural divide, the employment numbers. When you bring in this amount of people, you could send them to places to build up new cities. You could send them to territories. They need people. There's natural resources that could use, you know, workers for, they could use more people to ship things there so that the costs are lower. Anything you could think of that a new city would need, you can do that. Canada is one of the least settled places in the world. That's why housing prices are so high. You get a lot of people in one pocket, and all of a sudden, there's not these other places you can just move to that are, you know, 50, 100,000 people like in the U.S. You either got to go to the middle of nowhere, or you got to be in one of these gigantic city centers where the price of living is insane. So those are your two choices. Middle of nowhere, not connected to anything. less access to resources, or you got to live in a basement apartment for $2,000. Those are basically your options as it is now. So why not send people to smaller places to develop them? You could literally just start a new city and you can't tell me that this is going to create like a, a ghetto or you're going to create some sort of enclave of one culture that doesn't assimilate with the rest of the cultures because that already happens. 
I mean, if you go to Markham in, in Toronto, you're seeing places where Mandarin is the main text on the sign. This isn't insulting. This is reality. The assimilation issue is already a wild issue. It's an issue people from English speaking countries don't have. Because if you if people want to say this is somehow racist, then you can look at Caribbean people and see they don't, you know, only live around only other Caribbean people. You can say this about Greek people. You can say this about a lot of other people, a lot of other cultures. But the people that they're bringing in now, for some reason or another, they want to bring just a massive amount of people from one place. Why, why is that? Why do they want to bring a mass amount of people from just a couple different places in the world? These are questions we're not allowed to ask. Questions we're not allowed to ask because it's too mean. And that's why I don't get why the conservative politicians are afraid of this. The people think they're mean already. And I and I mentioned this sort of when I was talking about the gender assignment surgeries. Because the only thing that stops you from asking questions and going all the way is people th- saying that you're mean and you're racist. But Pierre Polyev just relates it to the housing numbers and it's black and white like that. Housing numbers, immigration, everything else is going to be fine. You're completely changing the facet of a country. And again, it would be the same if you brought in 100,000 Japanese people, 500,000 Indians, or if you brought in like 600,000 Swedes who all want to, you know, increase taxes by 30% and have like weird music festivals, EDM festivals constantly, right? So it doesn't matter where the people are coming from. You import a gigantic swath of people from a different part of the world. It's going to change your culture, especially when you just siphon them all into one place. There is another option. It's literally just drastically lower the amount of immigration. And the number one reason you will hear even conservatives say is, you know, we, we're we declining population. We need more people. I mean, technically this is true, but have you tried it the other way? Have you tried it a little bit? Now you can say things like Japan's doing this or they've done this and it's been terrible. Japan has very low immigration numbers and, but things are still cheaper than they are here. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you. They have uh, the lo- the lower birth rate than us. They've got a lot of stuff that they're not doing, right? But when it comes to Canada, for some reason, we just don't want to try. In Western countries, they just don't want to try. They don't want to try, you know, adjusting the economy. You know, automation is huge right now. So are you going to need these truck drivers? Are you going to need cashiers are already flying out the window? You don't need them anymore. Automation replaces a lot of jobs. It's going to replace agriculture jobs, too, unless people take a stand. But my point is, is why don't you try, you know, lowering the numbers? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of being called a bigot? What right do people have to just come to your country? Because you can't do that to other countries. You can't just walk in to Japan, like I said. You can't just get in to Turkey. You can't. This is just not how it works in the rest of the world. So there's some sort of weird guilt thing where you think that you have to open your your arms and your land to everybody. You don't have to do this. So why not just try? Why not just see how it goes for about five years to ten years? One election cycle, two election cycles. Say we're going to drastically lower immigration. Not because we're mean. Just to see how it goes for our economy. Just to see how it goes for the people that are already here, which we're supposed to be the ones taken care of. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just sick of politicians being afraid to say things because of what the people that already hate them are going to say.